know what that word example means? What I do, you do. Jesus set an example early that those who are in him, those who are love him, those who, who have been saved by him, that we should serve like him. In fact, he said something else. He said this. He said, the greatest in the kingdom are those who serve. And that's what he said. The greatest in the kingdom is the one who serves. And we know that Jesus set the tone for service even as he, Lord and King of the universe, came to this world not to be served, but to serve his people. Amen? Serving specifically unto salvation. Serving specifically unto life transformation. You see, it's, it's, uh, it's incumbent upon each and every one of us who've come to know Christ as our Lord and Savior to find a place where we can serve him. Understand, some people center on gifts. Gifts are important because that helps us to know where we need to serve him. But gifts can become self-serving if all we're trying to do is validate our own gifts. You understand, our gifts are not given to us to validate us. Our gifts are given to us to validate the kingdom of God. Amen? And so we, God has given us these gifts, and we serve God by serving others. Jesus has made it so clear as he washed the disciples' feet, you want to serve me, serve one another. You want to serve me, love one another. And we're going to be looking today, if you want to turn in Hebrews um, chapter 6, I call it God's book of coffee, right? Hebrews chapter 6, a few people get it in about 10 minutes. We're going to be beginning in Hebrews chapter 6 today. As I came across this scripture, it deeply touched my heart, and it was something that gave me consolation. Has anyone ever sometimes when you've done ministry, you've said somewhere between it, why'd I do this? Anyone ever asked that question? I'm, I'm glad a few people are joining me right now. Sometimes even as a pastor, you wake up and say, why am I doing this? We all do that Sometimes. Because serving the Lord sometimes can be thankless. Serving the Lord can be difficult. It's not easy to serve the Lord. And we have to be people who need to learn how to maintain our hearts in service or we will burn out. Now, I share this with you for a reason. I, I have the wonderful privilege and responsibility of being a presbyter with the Assemblies of God. I have 27 churches that are under our charge here in the Northwest sections, pastors that we work with, we mentor with, we, we help them with troubles with their own church. And there's something that I have come to see that I want to share with you because of all of us in our service before the Lord, we have to be able, when we get tired, to be able to diagnose, why am I tired? Anyone ever gotten tired in ministry? Yeah, get a retread. <laughs> That's almost as bad as no, no, what's that? Uh, old pastors never die, they just go out to pastor. Anyway. Um, okay, uh, 2015, new jokes, better ones, okay? No doubt about it. <laughs> you, you see, there, there's three things that I've noticed. When, when someone gets tired in ministry, they think they need time off. Maybe they do. You see, there's three things that are needed in all of our lives when we take a break. That's why God made the Sabbath. Jesus is our rest, our Sabbath for the work he did. But how many people know physically, mentally, spiritually, we all need a rest sometimes? The problem is we turn our rest into being arrested and then we don't get started again, <laughs> right? We can't do that. But there's three things that we all need. We need physical and emotional rest sometimes. Sometimes we need recreation, a change of pace and activity. And there's other times when all we need is just renewal spiritual renewal. Now, the problem I find with most, uh, th that I find with a lot of the pastors I work with, when they get tired, they think they can mask it between rest and recreation. I got to get out and play golf. I'll feel better. You probably will if you don't lose the ball, <laughs> right? But, but, but hear me, and there's, that's good, and that's right, and that's good to diagnose. But sometimes it's not about rest, and it's not about, re uh, it's not about recreation. Sometimes it's about renewal. You see, I don't just say this to pastors. I say this to all of us here. Sometimes we get tired. But it, it may be about taking a short rest. It may be about um, getting some kind of recreation or getting outside uh, of the cage for a while. But sometimes it's about getting on our knees. And what we're going to see here in this scripture is what we find on our knees to renew us, to continue 
to serve God with great vigor, with great thanksgiving, and with great effectiveness. Amen? We're going to see that today. So if you're in Hebrews chapter 9 with me, we're going to begin starting at verse 9. And the first thing we want to say is this. We have all, if we have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are all commissioned in him to serve. Notice I didn't say commissioned by him. We're commissioned in him. And I'll share with you in a moment why we say that. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, the things that accompany salvation. Say that with me. The things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner. Now, this is important to understand the context. People have argued over Hebrews chapter 6 since the first century. I won't argue with you over it. I think people try to go too far with what they're trying to say. In the beginning of Hebrews chapter 6, there's a warning for those who have tasted the grace and the goodness and the repentance of God that if they, if, if they, if they walk away and they do not renew themselves onto repentance, there's a problem. Right? And it warns all of us. But the second half of Hebrews chapter 6 is wonderful because the the, the writer of Hebrews chapter 6 says this, we are confident of better things for you. Now, warnings are warnings. Just because we warn something of something doesn't mean that they're doing it, but because of our own personal experience, we want to make sure they don't step in the same mud we stepped into. One of the greatest things as as being a leader in the Assemblies of God that has helped me is seeing the mistakes of other pastors. And I say, whoa, don't want to go there. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Don't want to go there. I've learned from others' mistakes, and I'm thankful for that. You see, this warning that he gives to us, whatever, however you want to interpret it, his bottom line is this. If, if we are those who will taste of God's goodness and through discouragement or selfishness or for whatever sinful reason we walk away, we put Jesus in a quandary with us. Don't, don't we? But he says, I am confident of better things for you. Things that accompany salvation. Now, this is important because what he's about to talk about, you're going to see, is serving the Lord. You see, this is really important. You see, we are commissioned in him. And just a little while ago, we partook of of the cup and of the bread. And in this cup is, is the grape juice that represents the blood of Jesus Christ. We sang it this morning. Oh, the blood of Jesus that cleanses me. How many people have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ this morning? You see, we are no longer our own, but we are hidden in him. Kenny said it so well, Pastor Ken said it so well as he did communion, that, that this is why you and I will enter heaven. This is why you and I will be able to see the Lord. This is why you and I can have a relationship with God, not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus has done on Calvary. Amen? You see, we are in him in our salvation. We are kept in him in our salvation. We have continued favor with the Father, not because of what I've done, but because of the timeless work that Christ has done on Calvary and that I have received it. You see, we are commissioned in him, in his great work that he did for each and every one of us. Look what it says in Hebrews chapter 9. How much more shall the blood of Christ cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You know what that says? The things I used to do that glorified me and the enemy and the things of this world, God has saved my soul and now everything I do glorifies him. Amen? You see, he saved us to bring us not only to heaven, but to bring us from dead works to serving the living God, to serving the Father in heaven, to serving Christ, the one who gave his life for you and me. You see, all of us, if we are saved, if we've been washed by the blood of Jesus, we are all commissioned in him to serve. Another thing that we're going to see is that We have, not only are we commissioned in him, we have a service towards him. Now, this is important. This is really important. This is something that that had to sink into my heart a long time ago. And sometimes it doesn't sink into people's hearts and they grow cold and they walk away. Look what it goes on to say here. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. How many people say amen to that? Thank God. When no one else sees, God sees. Amen? Amen. God bless you. You're right, Brenda. God bless you. That was a good sneeze. Fine sneezing. Fine sneezing. Infected everyone. Um, 
in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. In other words, you've ministered in the past and you continue to minister. Now, this is really important. It says that God does not forget our work and our labor of love. Sometimes we feel like nobody cares, nobody sees. That's not true. That's not true. Now, this morning, we're going to say thank you to a lot of people. And guess what? We do see. We do care. We are happy about that. But even for the things that people don't see, in fact, maybe every once in a while, it's good for us to serve in a way that no one else sees. Didn't, doesn't the word talk about not letting the left hand know what the right hand is doing? Sometimes just serving God because I served God is so important. I did it for you, Jesus. You see it, you know. But you see, this scripture, there's power in the scripture. And let me tell you why there's power in the scripture. You see, this is not nearly an, merely an acknowledgement of our service, but an empowerment for our service. Let me say this again. This is not near, uh, merely an acknowledgement of our service before the Lord, but an empowerment for service. Look what it says here. Your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards what? His name. That's important. First of all, the word there for labor of love, the word is ergon, that means to work, it means to do something. But that word there for labor is a different word, it's the word copas. Everyone say copas. That's as close as I'll ever get to Spanish. Copasa. Sorry, Ruth. Anyway, you know what copas means? It means troubled weariness. Have you ever worked till you were weary? Have you ever worked on something that just drained you emotionally, physically, and spiritually? That's what he's talking about right now. That's what the author's talking about right now when he says your labor of love. You see, for those that we love and the things that we love, we will wear ourselves out. Now, when my kids were little, and I'll, I'll keep it there, I won't go any further, they love video games. They still do. And I do remember a few times having to yell around 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning because they were like, <laughs> you got to get up for school in the morning, <laughs> right? You unplug the thing. What'd you do that for? Right? You see, they would wear themselves out over something they loved. You see, if you're wearing yourself out and you're saying, why am I doing this? You have to renew your love. Did you hear what I just said? You have to renew your love. This is why it says up here, it was done or shown toward his name. When we're talking about someone's name, we're talking about their authority. When we're talking about someone's name, we're talking about their character. Christ, who we said gave his life on Calvary, who shed his blood for you and for me. Because of what he did, we have fellowship with the Father. Because of that, out of thanksgiving to Jesus, we serve. Out of thanksgiving to Jesus, I help my neighbor. Out of thanksgiving to Jesus, I love my enemy. Out of thanksgiving to Jesus, I'll do all manner of things that maybe in the physical I don't care to do, but I do it because I'm so grateful for what God has done. Now, if you can kill yourself over a video game, wouldn't you want to at least inconvenience yourself a little over Jesus Christ who saved your soul? Amen? You see, to do ministry for the long haul, to serve for the long haul, we have to always keep it in our hearts and our mind that we are doing it in the name of Jesus. We are doing it for Jesus. Not everything we do will always be thanked. Not everything we do will always be recognized. Not everything we do will always be effective. You ask a few leaders here and a few people here, we've had a few duds over here at Mountaintop Church also. But we say, well, we tried. Lord, we thought that's what you wanted. But you know something? The important part is not that I was successful, but that I was faithful in what God called me to do. Amen? I want to encourage you today. If you've been serving the Lord and, and it's become a sacrifice, it's become difficult. Listen to me. The word difficult is implied when you say sacrifice. That's the problem. We say, I want to sacrifice for you, Lord. Lord. How come you're not serving the Lord anymore? Oh, it hurt too much. Oh, I just, no one thanked, no one cared. And I, it just took up too much of my time. Mm -hmm. I love what it says, uh, the great movie, A League of Their Own. And she quits the baseball league and she said it got too hard. And he says, of course it's hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Understand, God will empower you. That word up there, I want you to see that word. 
It says that God is not unjust to forget. You see that word forget? You see that? That is a really important word. What it literally means, and I think I gave you the wrong word. Yes, to forget. You see, that word is not so much about acknowledgement, but it's about empowerment. See, he who, finish with me, began a good work in you, will see it until its day of completion. God will not forget what he started in you. Anyone hear what I'm trying to say right now? God will not forget what he called you to. God does not forget what you're going through. God's provision is always perfect for what he has called you to do. See, Jesus will not forget the labor of love. He will not forget the times when we need to sacrifice, that his grace will be there to meet us in our difficult times. If we remember, Lord, what you did for me to get on our knees and say, Lord, I do this as unto you, not as unto others, but as unto you. As long as my labor is unto the Lord, I won't get offended. As long as my labor is unto the Lord, I won't get discouraged. As long as my labor is on to the Lord, I won't get burned out. There may be days where I'm teetering on that and I'm thinking about people and how I've been disappointed. But then when I remember, Lord, this is what you called me to. And Lord, there'd be nothing else that I could do to find your peace in my life. Lord, I continue to walk in this way, Lord. I pray that all of us would find our satisfaction in pleasing the Lord. When we love each other, we please the Lord. Amen? And sometimes it is a sacrifice loving one another. How many people know that? Yeah. I heard a thousand amens on that one. Yeah. And there's only about 150 people here. That's amazing. <laughs> Ministry is hard work. Serving is hard work. And it's thankless sometimes. But that's what sacrifice is all about. I love what Paul says in Philippians 1, 6. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it in the day of Christ. He's not going to leave you hanging. My pastor always used to say, there's no such thing as burnout. Well, there is such thing as burnout, but there's no such thing as burnout if we keep coming back to Christ for renewal. Amen? You see, sometimes we think it's recreation. Sometimes we, we, we think it's rest, and those things are good, but I, I hear this sometimes. I did my thing. I'm done. Aren't you glad? You may say, I got 25 years in. I'm leaving it to someone else. I, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Aren't you glad that Jesus doesn't look at your salvation and said, I put 25 years in. I'm done. Did his grace stop when you stopped serving? No. Does our thanksgiving stop when, he, when we stop serving? Yes. And that's why we stop serving. Many times we say, oh, let the younger people do it. Ah, you know, let someone else do it. And you know something? It's all right that we say, you know, maybe I'm not going to do this ministry anymore. We had a few transitions in our ministry this year where someone transitioned from one ministry to another ministry. That's following God's calling. Amen? That may be adjusting to this body that's getting older and that can't do the things it used to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But for someone who says, I'm just going to come to church. I'm not going to do anything anymore. I've done my thing already. I get a little nervous for them, not for me, but for them. You see, if I'm doing that, I forget what Christ has done. If I'm doing that, I forget what Christ is still doing and what he's going to do. Does my, do I only have to give 20 years of thanksgiving for an eternity? Or five years of thanksgiving for an eternity? You see, our service towards him is all about him empowering us and doing this in his name out of thanksgiving for what he's done. whether we're appreciated at times or not. How many people know you're not going to please everyone all the time? Whether you're recognized or not, not everyone's going to see what we do. Whether we are effective or not, it was for him. Amen? See, we don't just serve for what, God, what we want God to do for us. That's a deal. We serve what God has already done for us. That's thanksgiving. Let me say that again. We don't serve for what we think God will do for us. That's a deal. We serve for what Christ has already done for us. That's thanksgiving. We don't serve because we're earning something. We serve because we owe something. If you think you don't owe God anything, you got a big problem. 
you don't owe me anything. And in a sense, I don't owe you anything. In fact, in the Apostle Paul says, owe no one anything but to what? Love one another. See, the debt of love is a debt of thanksgiving before our Father. The debt of love says, Lord, you love me so much, Lord God, I owe. And Lord, I will love others as you love me. Out of this great debt, Lord, I will never stop loving others. I'll never stop endeavoring to love others. I'll never stop pushing through to love others when I give up. Many times I say, wait a minute, somebody now owes me. I'm guilty of it. I won't lie to you. I was on staff at another church before this. I served very faithfully and Boy, I, I sure let God know how faithful I serve at that church. How loyal I was to that pastor. How good I was. And I, I, I won't lie to you as much as I'd like to tell you, I, I left there with the most sincere of motives, and God was moving me on, and God was doing great things, and I love my pastor. There was a little something inside of me that says, Full Gospel Church owes me something. How about you? God had to beat that out of me. How about you? I serve because I owe. I give because I owe. Not, not out, of, out of that God is going to come down and smite me, but out of love because of what he did. How could I not want to serve him this way? Not only are we those who are commissioned in him, not only are those who have a service towards him, but the next thing we're going to see in the scripture is that we are those who are inspired by him. How many people sometimes it becomes, uh-huh, same old, same old, same old. Aren't you glad that God's Holy Spirit was with us this morning? Now, if God's Spirit wasn't here, it might have been a concert. We might have said, yeah, nice. Uh, you know, this person was off, and that one was off, and this one was a little flat. But I'll tell you what, the Spirit of God was here this morning. How many people know that? How many people here were touched by the Spirit of God? See, I was inspired this morning. As we worship the Lord, I was inspired because the Spirit of God was here. We felt Him among us and doing His ministry among us as we worshiped Him. You, you see, it's important that God inspires us. We will all grow weary in doing good. How many people know that? We will. That's why Scripture says, don't grow weary in doing good, <laughs> right? In due time, we will reap if we faint not. Look what it says in verse 11. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Now that's really neat. The word there, diligence, is the word spudo. Everyone say, spudo. My friends call me spudo, but my real name is Ms. Burn. Right now, does anyone know what word we got a spudo? Speed. It, this is really neat. This word speed is, it, it's all about an eagerness to dispatch. An eagerness. Have you ever had to tell someone, slow down? Have you ever had to tell someone that? You know, on, on, on New Year's Eve, I, I had to tell a few people, slow down, you're not going to the chair tomorrow, you don't have to eat so fast. Right, slow down. You ever see someone who's just so excited to start something that they just move too quick, and sometimes they make mistakes. Have you ever been there? I have, right? You see, because we're so eager, we can't wait. You see, that's what that word is all about. That's what that word diligence is all about, that I can't wait and I want to do this quickly, you see, because I have been inspired. One thing I don't think you've ever heard at Mountaintop Church, a word that you have never heard from me and you've heard very few times here, is the word commitment. Because if I used it, you would call them and they would take me away. I spent half the night thinking of that joke. I know, nice guy, slow on the delivery, I know. If, thank you, Freddie. If Freddie Marinelli said that joke, everyone would have been hysterical. Really, they would have been, so just slow delivery. Commitment. See, in my heart and in my eyes, serving Christ is not about commitment. It's about inspiration. That I have been so captured. We said something to like this this morning as we sang. We said, I surrender to your love. Isn't that beautiful? You see, I can yell commitment at anyone, but are they going to commit themselves? If anything, I'm going to make them angry. See, use the word commitment, you will increase guilt. But if you inspire people, you won't be able to stop them. Listen to me, we all have time and money for what we want to do. Don't tell me otherwise, this is not true. You know, I have people come in here, oh, we're, we're behind on the rent, and we, we don't have this, we don't have that. And in the meantime, holy cow, I, I need a gas mask because of the smoke that I smell all over them. 
And you go to the car and you see 27 packs of cigarettes in the back. And then you find out that they have a 50, 60, 70 dollar a week habit in cigarettes. And you got to say something to them. Say, wait, wait a minute. You don't need help with money. You need help with this thing that you're robbing your family from. You see, people will always find time and money for what they want to do. Then we'll find other people to do what we don't want to do. Isn't that the truth? It's our nature. I'm the same as you are, as the same as anyone else is. There are things that we don't want to do and we put them off. But the things we want to do, they're done in a second. Spumone. <laughs> right? Yeah. You see, it says here this. That we show diligence, listen to me, to the full assurance of hope until the end. Are you assured of your blessed hope until the end? You know what's going to keep you and me excited? Jesus is coming again. Did you hear that? That's what's going to keep us excited. It says this in, in Titus, and you know this so well, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that we might rede- he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for the works of God. When we not only think of what he did, are we thankful, but when we think of where, what he's going to do, we get excited. I want to ask you a question. Don't worry if you're tired. We'll be done soon. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. If you knew beyond the shadow of a doubt Jesus was coming at the end of January, what would change in your life? You did not hear Donna's comment. She said, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> what would change in your life? I've got to get ready. Isn't it amazing? Ebenezer Scrooge, when he saw that he was going to be in the grave by the end of the year, boy, he had a lot of changes, didn't he? How about you? How about me? See, this is why Scripture says, live every day like he's coming tomorrow. This is why we as God's people live every day like he's coming tomorrow. Now, I don't know when he's coming again. We know it's the season. How many people know that? We'd be fools not to think it's the season, but we don't need the day. And I think God did it on purpose so we don't say, well, he's coming, okay, when we're at one a month out, I'll start serving him again. Right? If you knew Jesus was coming in a month, in what way would you serve him differently? Serve him that way. Serve him that way. Oh, don't take me wrong. It's not a matter of necessarily saying I have to be part of this ministry or do this. But it's a matter of saying in everything I do, Lord, I'm going to glorify you. Those old works that used to glorify me, those old works that used to give glory to the enemy and his kingdom, now I want for everything that I do to give glory to you. The church is a wonderful avenue. Let me tell you why. You see, some people go to church and they say, well, I got the best preaching over here and I get the best worship over here and this place is great and it's exciting. They good, good, good kids ministry and I'm going to go over there. Listen to me, they're missing the boat. It's not about getting the best of everything in Christianity for yourself. You already got that at the cross. Okay? What it's about is a community of people who love each other. A community of people who worship together. A community of people who serve the Lord by serving one another and serving their community around them. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is all about. And if it's just the best of this and the best of that, go find the best and you'll find that you have missed the boat. Because you already have the best. The blood of Jesus was shed for you. I think if we're looking at consumerism in that way, we have to question if we understand what Jesus did for us. I thank those that serve, who sacrifice. Renew your heart daily. Renew your heart daily. I, I, I thank God for those who, who even when it gets difficult, they continue to serve. And let the Lord inspire your heart remembering together, all of us, that Jesus Christ is coming again. And the last thing we're going to see this morning from the scripture 
is that we need to be watchful for him. We need to be watchful for him. What am I saying? Well, I don't know what I'm saying. Let's see what the scripture says. That you, verse 12, do not become sluggish. How many people say, wait a minute, I'm not a slug? Well, maybe after New Year's and Christmas you feel like a slug right now. But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The word there for sluggish literally means slothful, lazy, dull. The word there for dull it doesn't mean that, oh, he's a dull boy. It means I don't see too well. I don't see too well. Now, I'm hitting 50 this year. And someone stole my eyes. <laughs> or some joker named Terry Camp put his glasses in place of mine. Because every year, it gets worse and worse. Now, a few years ago, I needed my glasses so I wouldn't get headaches. Today, I need my glasses so I can just function. How about you? I look at this and say, I've got no hope whatsoever. I better rely on the mega memory program because I can't read it. I put my glasses on. I say, that's nice. And I got these glasses a year ago. And I just said to Diane, oh, no, what? I close my eye. I can't see what it says with my right eye. Slippage, slippage, right? <laughs> yeah, then I can say anything I want in church, I know. <laughs> Welcome to my world. You see, we all become dull. We all become sluggish. And what I'm talking about is not that we necessarily are lazy, but we don't see anymore. Dull of hearing, dull of seeing, dull of doing. You see, we become dull when we get distracted. How many people know that? Now, like yourself, I remember one time I, I uh, had someone say to me, they, they had a baby and they were, they had a ministry and they were not, they were just, weren't doing too well with it. And I said, are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you? You have to understand, we got this baby, and I got to get to church, and this and that. Now, you understand, I'll do this. Mm -hmm, I understand, I understand. You know what I was saying inside of myself? Yeah, I got three. I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> How many people know? Soccer, football, band, working extra hours, I got to get this job to make ends meet. They'll begin to distract us, and before you know it, we're walking out of his service. Right? Please, I, I'm, not, I'm not faulting anyone now, because we can get, all get distracted very easy. It happens to all of us. But Scripture says here that not to become distracted, but be watchful for him. Do not become sluggish, but look at this. Imitate. Everyone say imitate. I love that. Vin DeLuca... If I want to imitate Vin DeLuca, I talk like this and I walk like that. If Vin DeLuca imitates me, he walks like that and he goes short, right? <laughs> Just if you lean this way or you lean this way, it really makes no difference, right? But he says, imitate these saints of God who through perseverance continue. I know I can't preach this thing anymore. Who, <laughs> who through perseverance, who through perseverance serve the Lord well and they ended well. Imitate them, imitate them. And it says that what was, what was important for them was faith and patience that they would inherit the promises. Does the promise seem far off to you sometimes? I'm looking at the news around me. Are you as grieved as I am right now with what's going on in, in our country? We see what's going on in New York. We see the anger and the hatred and, and, and these, the, these needless fights that are going on right now. You see, these are people who have no hope. If we center on that, we allow ourselves to get angry about that, we'll have no hope either. See, our argument can't be their argument. My opinion is not necessary. It's Christ's redemption that's necessary. Amen? Amen? It's speaking peace. It's speaking redemption. It's speaking healing. See, I say that for a reason. If we get distracted, we, we will become dull of hearing, dull of seeing, dull of doing. But if we remember that God has promises for us, and those promises are yea and amen, and even if there's a lagging in time, that those promises have not been nullified, they're just growing in interest for you and me. Amen? His promises keep us watchful. Now, I 
enjoyed Monday morning, there is a great program called Shalom TV. Anyone ever seen that? And there's this rabbi, Rabbi Golub, and he has something called from the Olivet. And I've been, on Mondays, I've been doing it for 22 weeks now. Guess what? I'm learning Hebrew for the first time. I think this is so exciting, right? And I can read through it now, and I know a few words in it. Nothing great. But I noticed what they did on purpose is they, they eliminated a couple of the lessons. And I said, you dirty rats. So I called them up, and I said, is there any way I can get those lessons? They said, yes, for $150, you can buy the whole set. <laughs> so I did so. You know what's funny? I couldn't wait for that set to come. I, I've just, I'm, I'm, I'm in Hebrew mode right now. You know what I'm saying? And I just can't wait for that, that, that to come. Notice we're in the book of Hebrews today, okay? And, and so I'm waiting. And, and, you know, they said, okay, it'll probably be a week. And, and I'm waiting. And, and the mailbox is, is over there. And I go, and it's three days. And I'm checking the mailbox. You know what I'm talking about? And because I can't wait for this program to come. I really want to go forward with it. And, and I can't wait to go forward with it some more. And then it's four days. And what do I do? I go out to the mailbox. Now, why am I doing this to myself? They told me it would take at least a week. What they didn't tell me was going to take two weeks. Right? It became a week. Oh, no, it's not here. I wonder if something's wrong. It was a week and a day. Something's got to be wrong. A week and two days. I called them up. And you know what I heard? Yes, we received your donation. I don't care about the donation. Where's the DVD set? Spude. <laughs> you see, when we see something great coming our way, we get excited. God's promises are coming your way and mine. Even if they get delayed, don't be discouraged because God keeps his promises. Amen? I want to thank those that have served so faithfully here at Mountaintop Church. It's our 13th year here together. This has been nothing but a joy. This has been an amazing journey that we've all gone of God's grace. And so many have served from the bottom of their hearts. And I want to encourage you today as you serve, remember you're commissioned in him. We serve because of what he did for us. He served us first. Amen? Remember our service towards him. He'll empower you even to get through the difficult times. Allow yourself to be inspired by him, knowing that Christ, you will come soon again, and it's going to happen. And allow yourself to be watchful for him, knowing that the kingdom of God is at hand.